Carol, there's a kind of an odd China connection to the fall of the wall. Um, you talked about it when we did a Tiananmen event not too long ago. Can you talk to us about uh, Mikhail Gorbachev and his trip to Beijing and how that fit into this whole story? Yeah, I had an interesting perspective on 1989 covering Tiananmen as well as the Soviet Union because I was based in Moscow for Newsweek. And, um, I think people forget that one of the reasons the student demonstrations in China went on so long is that they were waiting for Gorbachev to come and they wanted to speak to Gorbachev and they wanted to speak to the international media and say, we want glasnost, we want perestroika, we don't have those things in China. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I was, a, I was a young correspondent and, um, you know, what happened in Tiananmen was very uh, tragic and very uh, just difficult emotionally to live through and uh, gave me a different perspective when I went back to Moscow, which is where I was based, about what could happen there. And I think when we look at beautiful photo slideshows and reflect from the vantage point of 30 years on, we may have a feeling of inevitability which we did not feel at the time, or I did not feel at the time. And I, just because it's more fun to have a panel where people pick fights, you know, I would love to, I don't know if there's anybody to fight with on this panel about whether it was inevitable. I mean, it was inevitable that communism collapsed. You can't imagine the clunky old Soviet Union competing with Silicon Valley, right? There was something just time bound about that, about the very idea of a world capital like Berlin being permanently divided by a wall. It's insane in retrospect, but it was not inevitable that communism fell in 1989. And the reason that it did is that Gorbachev was unwilling to use force. And Deng Xiaoping was. And that is, I believe, the critical difference. And had Gorbachev used force, things could have been different in Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union for a long time. Maybe not up until today, but for a long time. Are and those what, events connected? Was Gorbachev influenced by what he saw in Beijing? I'm sure Gorbachev, he was an emotional person. And I'm yes, he was certainly influenced by what he saw in Beijing. You know, I think when you ask yourself, why did one situation turn out so differently from another? Um, um, I don't mean to get into Tolstoy, but you know, large, <laughs> large groups of people move history, right? All those people on Tiananmen Square moved history. All those people that we were, you know, outside the Kremlin, you know, Red Square, whatever, all the people demonstrating, I mean, all of that mattered, right? And yet, and yet, at the end of the day, the, the dictator makes decisions based on a very shrink-wrapped set of advisors that are close to him. And Deng Xiaoping deciding to fire on students, I think, had a lot to do with who, you know, Li Peng, who was immediately around him. You know, I don't, Zhao Ziyang happened to be in North Korea. There's a lot of Chinese history here that I won't go into, but he had at his elbow people who advised him to be tough. And Gorbachev had at his elbow, like, Raisa. And, I'm, uh, you know, Normal people, people. Yeah, uh, people who advised him not to shoot. And, and as much as world history is moved by these big, big uh, events and, and, and public pressure, it may also be determined, funnily enough, by a very small number. 